Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So a new diabetes drug, this time out of the UK, is being heralded as the next wonder drug when it comes to weight loss. But what about the side effects? Well, let's find out. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by Dwayne Miller, Craig Russell and Shrikanth Bellary, all of the Aston University in the UK. Their piece was published in The Conversation and covers a new diabetes drug that, like Zempic, is now being marketed as a game-changing weight loss intervention. And there are links in the description below to the study and to the articles I used to put this presentation together. This new drug that was initially designed to treat type 2 diabetes has now been approved for use in the United Kingdom. Terzepatide, to be sold under the brand name Munjaro, could be available for prescription by early 2024, that all being subject to its availability. Munjaro is an injectable treatment that helps the body to both control blood glucose, that's the sugar, after meals, and also to regulate people's appetite. Research into the drug has shown it's far more effective at controlling blood sugar, and it leads to greater weight loss when it's compared to the type 2 diabetes drugs that are currently available for prescription worldwide. Terzepatide is derived from a protein with a similar structure to the hormone GIP. This hormone stimulates the release of insulin. What's unique about terzepatide is that it binds to the receptors of another hormone, that hormone being GLP-1, glucagon-like peptide 1, which also releases insulin. This makes terzepatide the first dual hormone agonist to be approved for treating type 2 diabetes. A dual hormone agonist is a drug which binds to a hormone's receptor and then activates it. Semaglutide, which is sold under the brand name Ozempic, only targets GLP-1. So how does this new drug work and how does it differ to the drugs that are currently on the market and are used for treating type 2 diabetes? The hormones GLP-1 and GIP are produced by specialized cells in both our large and our small intestines, which release them in response to rising levels of blood glucose after we've eaten a meal. GLP-1 and GIP both act on the pancreas to increase production of the hormone insulin, which lowers our blood glucose levels. They also decrease production of glucagon, which normally increases our glucose levels when they are thought to be too low. Being less able to regulate glucose levels after meals is thought to be the main cause of type 2 diabetes. GLP-1 also controls how quickly our stomach empties, so this makes us feel fuller for longer. When combined, all of these have significant benefits in lowering our blood glucose levels. These effects have also been shown to lead to considerable weight loss. The effects of GIP and GLP-1 that our body naturally produces only last around two minutes, but terzepatide has been modified, so these hormones degrade slowly and are longer acting. They last around five days. This means terzepatide only needs to be administered once a week. But how effective is this new drug when it's actually compared to Ozempic? As terzepatide mimics the effects of two hormones, it's perhaps not surprising that research trials have found it to be more effective than semaglutide, which only acts on GLP-1. A 40-week trial compared 5 mg, 10 mg and 15 mg dosages of terzepatide, which have all been approved for use, with one milligram of semaglutide. The trial found that all doses of terzepatide were more effective than semaglutide at lowering average blood sugar levels, with more than 80% of those treated with terzepatide able to achieve their glucose targets. Now, it's important to note here that the dose of the drug does relate directly to its efficacy. So, Dosage levels of different drugs are not comparable. A separate year-long study found that 50 milligrams of terzepatide was as effective at controlling blood glucose levels as insulin. Another benefit of terzepatide for people living with type 2 diabetes is that it does support weight loss. 
Research has shown that those taking terzepatide for type 2 diabetes lost an average of 8.5 to 13% of their body weight, while those taking semaglutide only lost around 7% of their body weight. Around 80 to 90% of people who are living with type 2 diabetes are classed as either overweight or they're classed as obese. Until recently, drugs used to treat this disease either resulted in no weight loss or, in some cases, were even linked to weight gain. Drugs such as semaglutide and terzepatide, which simultaneously lower blood glucose and promote weight loss, have transformed the medical community's way of treating type 2 diabetes. Weight loss can support the management of type 2 diabetes and in some cases can even put it into remission. This is because having a higher body weight, especially weight carried around the middle, can lead to insulin becoming less effective and being produced in smaller quantities by the body. Terzepatide can also safely be used alongside other diabetes drugs such as metformin if diabetes control targets are not being met. So the big question is, will this drug now be prescribed for people who are just worried about weight loss? With semaglutide moving from being a treatment solely for type 2 diabetes to a weight management drug, many people are wondering if the same will happen with terzepatide. There's strong evidence to suggest that this could be the case. In a large 72-week study involving obese patients without diabetes, those who used terzepatide lost between 15 and 20% of their body weight. The placebo group only lost 3.1% of their body weight. Another long-term trial of a once-weekly injection of terzepatide found a 20% loss in body weight on average for people who were overweight but did not have type 2 diabetes. Although no studies have directly compared terzepatide and semaglutide, these reductions in weight are greater than those reported in studies that only used semaglutide. But while terzepatide has the potential for weight management, it has not yet been approved for that use in the UK, Europe or the United States of America. It's only currently approved for the management of type 2 diabetes. Given the supply issues with GLP-1 analogues globally, it's essential that these drugs are prioritised for people who do have type 2 diabetes. But now that terzepatide has been approved for use in the UK, it could help reduce the recent worldwide shortage of semaglutide. This all sounds great, but as with all drugs, now that the trials have been concluded, these drugs do come with some side effects. These are the most common side effects. The most common side effect that we see with Ozempic or semaglutide is nausea. In the step one trial, 44% of participants given the medication did experience some nausea versus 17% who were just given placebo. We also often talk about diarrhea. So again, in the semaglutide group, 32% experienced diarrhea versus 16% in the placebo group. But it's really important to remember that these two side effects, in addition to others like gas and abdominal pain and heartburn, do tend to resolve over time as your body gets used to the medication. Probably more worrying is this revelation from Peter Atia on diabetes drugs and muscle loss. I'm sure you're very familiar with the latest craze with semaglutide, which is a, an injectable drug that has... Ozempic. Yeah, Ozempic being the, the diabetes version of that, Wigovi being the, the pure weight loss version. It's the same drug, just a different name. What I see behind the scenes of what it's doing to people, and I, I'm sure other doctors can tell you similar stories, ideal weight loss would be if you lose 20, 15 of it should be fat, five of it should be lean mass. So you can't just lose fat mass, but three quarters of your weight loss should be fat mass. When we're putting patients on these drugs, we're doing DEXA scans before and after. This is something the FDA did not require the company to do when they sought approval. We're seeing two-thirds of the weight loss is lean mass. Only one-third wow. is fat mass. Wow. So they're getting lighter, Megan, but they're getting fatter. 
Now, this is obviously concerning. So I did some more research to find out if I could find any more information on this muscle loss or if perhaps people had a counter argument to this. And I found this. Peter says he's sure other doctors are seeing this and I'm going to say no, they are not. In fact, I oversee one of the largest GLP-1 providers. Sequence is my uh, program. We have over 20,000 members on these medicines, many of who have gotten uh, DEXA scans and other body composition scans. And in fact, I asked many of my members this uh, issue and they sent me all their DEXA scans and I never saw anything like this. There have been studies, subgroup analyses, of semaglutide and also terzepatide, mind you, looking into this. You can see that the semaglutide, there is a slight increase in lean mass loss compared to what is expected. It gets to around 40% lean mass loss. I've never seen it in my clinical population. When you look at terzepatide data though, it's around 25%, right where we would expect lean mass loss. I had to make a comment on this video because honestly, I just feel like it's complete fear mongering. I can tell you, I can promise you, my experience along with my provider's experience have much more than uh, Peter has seen in these patients. I've had many uh, physicians reach out to me who are obesity experts and specialists say they have not seen this kind of lean mass loss. So as is very often the case with the medical and scientific community, they cannot agree on one clear cut answer. Maybe they can agree, but maybe for some reason there's some bias. Let me know what you think. So these new diabetes drugs look to be set to be a fantastic winner, financially that is, for Big Pharma. Could these new drugs be even more lucrative than statins? Let me know what you think in the comments of the YouTube video. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. I've made some notes. I think irrespective of any side effects, those people who are overweight and take this drug will see it as a quick fix for losing weight. Why do you think there is a worldwide shortage already of semaglutide? Unfortunately, those that do take it will probably then see this as a way of maintaining that weight loss while still following an unhealthy lifestyle, eating all the wrong foods and not doing nearly enough physical exercise. As with many, many other drugs, the long term effects, the long term side effects of taking this diabetes drug when you haven't got diabetes as a way of maintaining um, lower body weight, while also following an unhealthy lifestyle, probably won't be known for years, even decades. Let me know what you think in the comments of the YouTube video.